Today is September 11th. Yesterday, September 10th, Pastor John returned to the pulpit. It's been four weeks since he preached. My name is Tim, the BTWN guy, and you are watching BTWN News. Please subscribe, like, and share. Link to support what I do. Link to support what I do in the description of this video. <clears throat> and for those of you who wish that I would just get to the point, I would like to take and observe a moment of silence for you. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't resist. I've been reading your comments and uh, many of you just wish I would get to the point. Well, you know what? I'm going to take my sweet old time and share my thoughts and uh, review of this past Sunday at Grace Community Church. And if you stay till the end, you're going to hear Tom, Pastor Tom Pendington, Pendington. Uh, he's an elder pastor, this gentleman here. You will hear his favorite story, a hilarious story, which he believes, or he joked, might cost him his job for telling. I'm not sure. But stay tuned for that at the end. MacArthur returns to the pulpit after four weeks off. And if you would like to support, there's a link in the description. I forgot to say this. But if, if you support on that platform on Ko-Fi, you can see all my content uh, with no advertising. So take advantage of that if you wish. Okay, so Pastor John returns to the pulpit. Four weeks ago, he finished his four-part series on heaven on earth. And one of his main points of that four-point ser uh, sermon, the four-point series, was that the church is heaven on earth. So now, as he comes back to the pulpit um, after not being in the pulpit. I was going to say taking a break, but I'm sure he's not taking a break. He's just not in the pulpit that particular week. So he comes back and now the title of his sermon on September 10th is the faithful believers relationship to the church. And a lot of you will be excited about this. And some of you will feel a little uncomfortable about the focus of this sermon. Um, I have chosen four brief clips. And for those of you who say, who say, just play Pastor John, we don't want to hear you. I understand that. I understand that. But uh, you'll have to wait till the video comes out or watch it live. But what I do here is give a review and I don't just play the clips. That would be a, a something people don't want to do. A violation of some tarp. So... We do a review here. Here is Pastor John in his opening remarks of the sermon on Sunday. And while in my mind that is uh, not a confusing subject and not a difficult one to understand. And that is that a faithful believer would be part of a local assembly is what he's referring to. There appears to be some kind of a distinction, some kind of a line drawn between being a quote-unquote Christian, having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and necessarily belonging to a church. You hear people say, well, I love Jesus, I don't like the church. Um, I was wounded by the church, I had a bad experience in the church, and uh, so I'm content to have my relationship with Christ be very personal. That's, that's pretty common. And also, in the culture that we live, where people want their privacy and they, they want a certain degree of isolation, there is a real trend, even in the church growth area, where people are saying that if you want to grow your church, you have to provide for people the opportunity to be anonymous. If you're on social media, you know that what Pastor John said is is one hundred percent true, because the internet is full of believers who have nothing to do with a local assembly, but they used to, and they've been hurt. And I don't doubt that they've been hurt. Pastor John doesn't question whether they've been hurt or not. But being hurt doesn't negate the biblical principles that mandate that we we gather together 
Um, and then now what Pastor John's going to share now is the springboard that he will refer to over and over again throughout his sermon. Um, as I was reading some of that this week, I came across this article in, of all things, a website that talks about church growth and church leadership. And here is a section out of this article. It says this, after several failed attempts at finding the right church, my sister, the writer says, who is approaching her 30s, shared with me that she longs to become a part of a church that is friendly and hospitable to all people, regardless of where they come from or what they've been through. But she wants her church also to foster a sense of anonymity, meaning she wants to be welcomed and made to feel at home, and then she wants to be able to hide, to be anonymous, or free to go at her own pace or sink into the rhythm and practices of the church. She longs for anonymity. He goes on, in the same way that everyone must be welcomed, recognized, and made to feel at home, churches and their leaders must also cultivate a feeling of anonymity within the environment. A key to facilitating anonymity is preserving a sense of personal privacy within the worshiping congregation. People must be made to feel comfortable in worship by thinking that nobody is watching. And so he makes this suggestion. One of the easiest ways congregations can seek to create the sense of anonymity is by taking measures to dim the sanctuary lights so that visibility within the congregation is reduced. In a low-lit sanctuary, worship participants can experience an environment where one might feel free to cry or laugh or sing, or even fall asleep without the fear of everyone noticing, including the pastor. I notice. (laughs) What kind of crazy approach to church is that? Come to the church so you can be anonymous? That defies the very purpose of the church. And Pastor John continues on that. As you can tell, I found the article that Pastor John was uh, quoting from, and uh, it is uh, adapted from um, Scott Crosette's book, The Kaleidoscope Effect, uh, What Emerging Generations Seek in Leadership. The book is written about what emerging generations seek in leadership. Ask, ask the lost people what they want in leadership. You see the, the flaw there. We look to the scriptures to tell us how leaders are to act. We don't ask emerging generations what they're looking for in leadership. It's hard to pick out certain clips um, throughout this sermon. It's an excellent sermon. Uh, here's another one. So it's very important to understand that at the very outset, to be joined personally to Christ is also to be joined corporately to His people. There's no such thing in the New Testament as someone joined to Christ but not to the church. If you have come to Christ, if you are then received by Christ, you have become one of those who is in Christ and Christ is in you. I I want you to know you are in the church. You are part of the church, all the redeemed. The church, then, is the corporate assembly of those who are redeemed. And another clip later on in the sermon, Pastor John, just, I'm, I'm playing some summaries that he made, but he, in between all these summaries, he exhaustively goes to the scriptures to make these points. If you're not a part of a church in a regular sense, then you have not placed yourself in the position that the New Testament assumes you should be in for your own sake 
and the sake of benefiting others. So let me kind of break apart this idea of, uh, of making an open confession of your commitment to Christ. And he does go on through that. And the last clip that I'll play for you is, is towards the end, and uh, after which Pastor John announces a special Sunday is going to be happening next week. This is, this is identifying all of us as those who should express love and loyalty to the others in the body of Christ that the Lord puts us in touch with. It's a, it's a ministry issue. Your spiritual gifts, your one another. It's even an evangelism issue. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen race, these collective descriptions. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you, as aliens and strangers, abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation." Again. Peter identifies believers as a, a race, a priesthood, a nation, a people for God's own possession. We are collectively described there, and we are to shine the darkness of the gospel and its marvelous light through not only our individual testimony, but our collective testimony as well. Well, that's just a bit of an overview but it speaks to the issue of being a part of the church of Jesus Christ. Pastor John goes on to, to talk about and explain that um, next Sunday is a special Sunday uh, at Grace Community Church. They're going to have a one day, if I understand it correctly, they're going to have a one day. Um, well, cur currently at Grace Community Church, when you want to become a member, you have to go through the membership classes, and there's a, a number of weeks of classes that you have to go through to become a member. And they're going to they're going to put all that, all those requirements, into one day of seminars or lectures. And so next week is a special week where they are going to uh, meet with everybody who wants to become a member, and they're going to go through everything they need to know, believe and understand and uh, expect from becoming members at Grace Community Church. And within one... For all those reasons that we saw. Within one uh, day, they can become a member of Grace Community Church, which sounds like a wonderful idea. That that, that would be great if every... if I, I don't see any down, any negative aspects of doing that. Um, especially in a church like Pastor John's where there's lots of people that want, want to join, and even in small churches. Uh, why not make it easy? Don't make church membership m more difficult than it has to be. And for those of you who say, oh, he just wants people to join his church or go to his church so that he can you know, have numbers and have money or do all this and do all that, his, his heart is to minister to the church. And from our perspective as believers, we are part of the church. And if you're not meeting with the church on a regular basis, um, and you're one of these people that want to be, remain anonymous, or you've been hurt, or you, you, uh, you know, you haven't found a church, it's vitally important, vitally important. This message, as Pastor John preached through the, um, this, the entire sermon, just proving in Scripture that we are called to gather together on a regular basis. And uh, membership, of course, being uh, the, the, uh, the crown of all that, where we can hold each other accountable. 
Now, I told you that there would be a, a story at the end. Pastor Tom, who does the announcements, uh, one, of the, one of his announcements this past week was that um, Patricia and John are celebrating 60 years of marriage. So in light of that, uh, Tom took the liberty of sharing a story, and it is his favorite story about Pastor John, and perhaps it will become your favorite story as well. Zero, 60th wedding anniversary of our pastor to his dear wife, Patricia. There's a, um, there's a picture of them on their wedding day in your bulletin, which has been so wisely put right above the premarital seminar. <laughs> so that was very wise. We have so many new folks here that I thought it might be helpful just to share a little bit about how this whole 60 years of grace of life with Pastor John and Patricia started. So I'm depending on forgiveness here before permission, so help me. In Pastor John's own words, this happened 60 years ago, I was looking for a woman who could be described in the way I described a godly woman, who came from a godly heritage, understanding my call for ministry, someone who loved the Lord, who walked with the Lord, he said, and of course, who was also really cute and could cook and have fun. I just love that. And I saw her, he's talking about Patricia, she kept coming to my house because she was my sister's friend, but there was a problem something Pastor John called a small nuisance. This small nuisance uh, was that she was engaged to someone else. <laughs> he said, I took her home from church one night. He was her Bible teacher, which is interesting, guys. Note that. Her fiance was away at school. I was at college. I was involved in playing football and I would come on Sundays to teach and she was my student. And then one night, Pastor John said, hey, I understand you're having some anxieties about that guy. And the reality was, he said, that she had all the wedding invitations addressed or stamped in the car and could not mail them. And so she was extremely vulnerable. She was restrained from mailing the invitations for the wedding, which was a few weeks away to this other guy. And I just said, John, Pastor John speaking, I said, I don't know what the Lord is doing through this. You should know your parents are all over you, your in-laws, mail these, mail these. You can't do it. And I said, maybe it's because, hey, who knows, the Lord might want you to marry me. <laughs> so she married him. <laughs> That's probably my favorite story of every story that we have about Pastor John. And so, Patricia, we want, I speak on behalf of so many, thank you for saying yes. And Pastor John would not be Pastor John without Patricia MacArthur. And we thank you. Zero. Well, there you have it. Pastor John uh, returning to the pulpit this week and uh, Tom telling one of his favorite stories. What did you think of the story? What did you think of this review? Um, leave your comments below. I do read them, even the negative ones. I almost delete no comments. I probably should delete more comments, uh, but I don't. I like uh, freedom of speech in the BTWN News comment section. Thankfully, this, uh, this review was uh, less than half as long as the sermon. Reviews should be shorter, shouldn't they? Yeah, probably. I just wanted to share those clips from you, encourage you. Uh, if you are a member of a church, praise the Lord. And uh, that is serving God's purpose in your life. Um, and if you're not, uh, you need to find one for sure. Um, Till next video, my prayer is that God will bless each and every one of you. Like, subscribe, leave messages, whatever. If you want to contact me personally, uh, you can email me at btwnnews at gmail.com btwnnews at gmail.com. Till next video, see ya.